वेलकम टू ई पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर विशाल जाधव असोसिएट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सोशोलॉजी तिलक महाराष्ट्र विद्यापीठ पुणे टुडे वी आर लुकिंग एट अ मॉड्यूल टाइटल्ड मार्क्सिज्म इन लैटिन अमेरिका एंड द मार्क्सिस्ट व्यूज ऑफ जोज कार्लोस मारिया टिगोई दिस मॉड्यूल कम्स अंटर द क्लासिकल सोशोलॉजिकल थियोरी पेपर बाय द अर्ली ट्वेंटी सेंचुरी Marxism had spread across the world even in Latin America which was run over by colonialism for centuries there were many new theorists and marxists who were questioning their rule uh in Peru too there were thinkers one of whom was Jose Carlos Maria Tigui this module will assess his work and his marxist understanding of how feudalism and capitalism are endangering his fellow countrymen since the early 20th century marxism was becoming a popular political ideology for most latin american practitioners who engaged in what antonio gramsci calls the war of position on the cultural front In the midst of this process some Latin American activists advocated that genuine education can gradually eradicate the problems faced by the region those who took the liberation theology stance chose to dwell publicly on religion which they realized forms an integral part of the life of the people in Latin America but at the background they condemned the church for they felt has historically religion and especially the church in many ways favored capitalism in the midst of these free opinions there was a general consensus reached by most american marxists in the first place all latin american marxists asserted that capitalism and its colonial neo colonial and imperialist manifestation basically harm society and would be eventually rejected by the masses at some stage maria tigui and marxism Marathi Goi established a very outward marxism that was soaked in a kind of burgeoning stalinist dogmatism of his time he borrowed a stalinist method and applied it to the peruvian reality he is said to be the first marxist to who was so caught up with the indigenous question in latin america he views marxism as a way geared towards building up a working class world view he posited that revolutionists must relegate conservatives ideas to the background for him marxists are not mediocrity nor do they accept injustice they are pessimists for conservatism to be stamped out it must not only be from the institutional level but from the level of the spirit of humanity as a great marxist follower and a socialist maria tigui borrowing from karl marx sees a revolution as the only way forward to solve the mess in his country peru such a revolution has double edged sword wherein the revolution undertakes the conquest of thought and the conquest of power at the same time he conceived marxism as that which is grounded on the concrete reality it is not a stream of rigid or static principles to further blend his marxist view jose Carlos rejected the outline of positivism and scientificism and argued that Marx's theory and politics were stamped on science and not scientificism. Moreover, Marxism for him was not a set of doctrines with some passive and rigid determinism. Karl Marx only propounded or proposed realistic politics and enacted how a new order which is socialism emerged from the present capitalism of his time. Marathi Goi's assessment of the Peruvian reality using Marx's historical process. Marathi Goi following Marxian historical categories although not in an exact manner discusses the evolution of the Peruvian economy following a historical trajectory and builds this up. A strict glance through his work one can find that there is a past history of Peru which runs from the period of the conquest of peru by the spanish up till the time of the republic this present phase is a mixture of events 
not capitalism alone as Karl Marx would present his. The future phase is socialism. This future ties to that of Karl Marx. The past from colonialism up to the time of guano and nitrates. As a starting point in his work, the seven interpretative essays on Peruvian reality, Maria Tigui recaptures the state of the beautiful Inca empire that had existed in Peru before the dawn of colonialism. It was a grouping of agriculturalists and sedentary communities. This is the starting point of the past phase of the economic evolutionist history of Peru. He posits that the Inca people were industrious, disciplined, pantheistic and simple and were living in material comfort with abundance of food. The population increased and even without knowing the Malthusian theory of population, the food supply was enough for that increasing population. In their primitive society, the Inca people were able to construct roads and canals and extend the borders. They had a collective and common purpose. Jose Carlos clearly states that their efforts were fruitfully for a social purpose. At these great glorious times of the Inca people came the Spanish and dislodged everything. The Spanish, according to Carlos, destroyed the impressive productive machine of the Inca people without being able to replace it. The indigenous society and the Inca economy were wholly disrupted and annihilated by the Spanish conquest of Peru. The result was the scattering of the Inca communities. After the conquest, what immediately follows is, as Maratigui puts it in his seven essays, is the wrangling over the riches of the Inca people. They plundered the treasures of the temples and palaces. They allotted land and men with no thought of the future used as forces and means of production. These Spaniards gradually began to till the land and mine the gold and silver. On the ruins of the remnants of a socialist economy, the Spaniards established the base of a feudal economy. Maria Tigui outstandingly makes it clear that the agenda of the Spanish at this time was the mining of the Peruvian gold and silver. This to Carlos is the first stage of historical process of the past phase of the evolution of the Peruvian economy. The feudal economy that emerges at this stage takes us to the second stage and this said feudalism will be blatantly condemned by Maria Tigui. The second stage is located within the confines of the economic foundations of the Republic. With the destruction of the primitive communism that had existed in Peru during the Inca Empire, Maria Tigui now opens up the second stage. He situates the second stage under the political and military rule. The first stage rose from a conquest. The second stage now began with independence. Looking at things from Marxian perspective, Maria Tigui is concerned with economic events even when he is fighting a political fight. But among these three, capitalism was too glaring in the coast. It had been eaten up the Peruvian economy. While assessing Peru, his springboard was the capitalist society, the way it had international. The reason he gives behind the statement is that even though the ideas of the French Revolution and American Constitution were favorably received in the South American, where there already existed an emerging bourgeois, which because of its economic needs and interest could and should have been affected by the revolutionary spirit of European bourgeoisie. Spanish America could not have achieved its independence had it not commanded a heroic generation sensitive to emotional needs of its time. Closely linked to this period of the Republic is the era of guano nitrates. With the discovery of guano and nitrates in the coast of Peru, a lot of it was to be exported to Europe and the exploitation of these resources became the center of the Peruvian economic life. And the Peruvian treasury derived its principal revenue from the exports of guano and nitrates. As a Marxist who sees economies as influencing every nation, Jose Carlos Maria Tugui outlined whole history of guano and nitrates from an economic viewpoint. This is because what caused the Peruvian economy to rise to some stage was later on taken over by the British due to poor geographical situations of Peru in the name of building railways. How does this become an economic problem? According to Maria Tugui, those who profit directly or indirectly from the wealth of the coast began to constitute a capitalist class. By this, the Peruvian economy was gradually transformed from a feudalistic society to bourgeoisie society stamped by capitalism. With the war 
of the Pacific, the second stage of the past phase of history comes to an end, collapse of the Peruvian economy. Present phase. At this time, Peru was in the post-war recovery period. There was almost a complete collapse of the country's productive energy. The country lost its principal resources, guano and nitrate, over to Chile. There is a paralysis of economic initiatives, a general depression in production and commerce, depreciation of the national currency and loss of foreign credit. As Mariat Gui puts it, Peru suffers a terrible anemia with military leadership emerging at this period. There was still no economic reconstruction and the capitalist group that was very prominent during the period of Guan and Nitrate period returned to power and the solution they found was stamped by mentality of latifundization and land ownership. The period that Martigoi experiences himself, Peru enters an era of borrowing to revamp its economy. But this did not really make things better. After making a critical analysis of the present phase of the Peruvian history of economic evolution, Maria Tugui discovered three things. There is the coexistence of primitive communism, the feudal system and the bourgeoisie economy. So, the present phase of the Peruvian history is a mixture of three different systems striving in one economy. But Maria Tugui was bent to erase feudalism, the bourgeoisie capitalism and to revise primitive communism and build up modern socialism. But among these three, capitalism was too glaring in the coast. It had been eaten up the Peruvian economy. While assessing Peru, his springboard was the capitalist society, the way it had internationalized human life and forged material bonds between people which established between them inevitable solidarity. From then onwards, the mission of Maria Tigui became that of building a new class, a socialist class emerging from the proletariat which would subsequently succeed the bourgeoisie. The future phase of history for Maritago is socialism. It is yet to come. He looks forward to that period where there shall be the eradication of all private property. As a leader of the Socialist Party in Peru, he proposed a reform for the Peruvian people. This was a socialist reform and it was to be achieved by force. Maria Tigui's postulation of the problems facing Peru. The Indian problem. The Indian problem is also known as the indigenous problem. The Indians were the original inhabitants of Peru. During the conquest, these peoples were relegated to the background. The lands were taken over by the Spaniards and they were rendered landless. Now Maria Tugui comes into picture. In a second essay, he says that the problem of the Indian is rooted in the land tenure system of the economy. Its cause, he says, is not to be found in the country's administrative, legal or ecclesiastical machinery, its staunch dualistic, pluralistic, cultural or moralistic condition. The problem of Indian was placed within the socio-economic system, a system that has oppressed the Indians for centuries. From this build-up, Carlos strongly asserts that if the Indian problem is socio-economic, it will be political as well. It stands glaring how Maria Tigui logically makes sure that economic facts should surface first before any other. Being a Marxist and Leninist at the same time, Maria Tigui posited that a land tenure system determine the political and administrative system of the Peruvian economy. These forms were destroyed by Spanish colonial rule and its feudal organization of economy. As the colonial regime proved incapable of establishing a productive feudal structural economy, what followed was the bringing of black people to Peru as slaves. At this juncture, the Indian population gradually reduced drastically. In the final end slavery was doomed to fail as a means of economic exploitation of the colony and as reinforcement of a regime based only on conquest and force. At the dawn of Peruvian independence and independence, the problem of the Indian was not solved. Maritigui would say that though servitude was abolished, it did not reduce the privileges of the landholding aristocracy, which continued to be the dominant class in the country. The Indians remained in factual servitude and unprotected. Maria Tigui pushes further with his argument. He unravels another problematic burning issue that was eating up Peru, this latifundization. Latifundization flourished in the coast. It was a form of capitalist technique, although its exploitation was still based on feudal practices and principles. 
within the confines of latifundization is the accumulation of large property within the capitalist system large property replaces and banishes small agricultural property industrialization of agriculture is accompanied by accumulation of agrarian property though large property seem to be justified by interests of production which i identified at least in theory with the interest of society the case of latifundization did not meet the economic needs work wage serf and wage earner when one takes a critical look at the agrarian system in peru in maria tuguis time one finds out as he says that the work system was chiefly determined by the property system this is tied up with the character of latifundization for feudal latifundization servitude in its varied ways survived in peru under various names coastal agriculture in the 1920s had improved rapidly but it took a rather capitalist bent in cultivation processing and sale of crops according to carlos there was very little progress when it came to the condition of labor still soaked in the spirit of feudalism the worker remained a serf the land holding class in peru regarded labor from the perspectives of slave owners and slave traders since most of them were blacks brought from africa although the land owners were not legally entitled to their feudal or semi feudal rights the position of dominance and the vast estates in the territory without industries and without transportation gave them almost unrestricted power the agrarian problem it is a proven theory that today 3/4 of latin america's people live in cities most of the region's countries still depend on agriculture to supply a major portion of their income latin america's countries export or sell to other countries much of what their farm produces such as banana sugarcane and coffee peru being one of the latin american countries is not left out maria tigoi lamented on the nature of the agriculture in peru he found out that the kind of agriculture practiced in peru was a great obstacle to development large or medium tenant farmers work together with the landless peasants work on land owned by landlords while simultaneously managing their own estates point he raises here is those who own land are the urban based political and economic elite who are completely ignorant of and remotely connected to agriculture and its problems they employ and utilize the labor power of the peasants and the landless laborers to extract maximum profit by minimizing the wages over time they have ample resources but contribute to no work or intelligence to the economic activity of the rural countryside this they are not interested in the mechanization of agriculture as they perceive it will lead to a dip in the profit margins this group of aristocrats maritia gui calls unproductive consumers they inherited income is considered by him as a feudal privilege the latifundization was another reason for the abysmal agrarian growth in peru maria tigui posited that with the prevalence of feudalism in some parts of peru it became practically difficult to create wealth which was according to marx a necessary condition that would speed up the formation of organized labor crop yields were poor farming methods were primitive along the coast agriculture was subjugated to the interest of the british and north america with such interest agriculture was not allowed to develop according to the specific needs of the national economy that is first of all to feed the population and also adopting and trying new crops the proposal of maria to way call for revolution after analyzing the issues of the native indians and concluding that it was a socio economic problem tied up to the land tenure system he declared feudalism as a depraving system for land problems to be resolved and feudalism was to be eradicated in its all form this to him was not to be done at the level of administrative ecclesial or through some sort of speeches but by a revolution by this maritagi proposes that emergence of a revolutionary class a revolutionary class will be workers and peasants eradication of feudalism feudalism according to maritagi was a system that was exploiting the laboring class in peru he saw it as a system that still enslaved many even in modern times where in many were burdened with work and only a few were reaping the fruits he sees it as a system that was consciously chosen and practiced by the spanish colonizers for marx he says it just as yet another stage of the state of affairs in the history of european development the whole agenda of feudalism is latifundization and the acquiring of huge property and estates such a practice for maria tugui was not welcomed in peru eradication of capitalism one of the aspects of capitalism is that it is a mode of production in which labor power is a commodity 
People's ability to work is purchased on the market by the capitalist who owns the means of production and employs the workers for specific ends. According to Karl Marx, capitalist exploitation consists of the fact that the value of workers' wages is less than the value of product he creates. This gap over time accumulates in the form of surplus value that is taken over by the capitalists. In such a situation, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. He advocated for Peru that was bathed in basic human equality. He wanted Peru wherein the original inhabitants, the Indians, feel at home in their own country. So he advocated for all systems like feudalism and capitalism and latifundization to be completely put to an end. Proposal for a socialist society. Marita agree after seeing the degrading situation of other forms of administration and governmentality in Peru, proposed that socialism or social transformation was the only way forward. Socialism, as his predecessors have posited, is an attempt to reconstruct society on the basis of common ownership of the means of production. Since reconstruction is undertaken in reaction to individualism and capitalism on the thesis that these movements lead to the exploitation of the proletariat by the owners of the means of production. As a Marxist, he saw a socialist revolution as the shift of control over the process of production from the minority of capitalists, managers and bureaucrats to the producers themselves. Such a move makes it possible the breakdown of the hierarchical division of labor and antagonistic relationship among groups of workers in the stratification system. Agricultural education and reform. Martigui argued that Peruvian economy to a very great extent depended on agriculture and related activities and hence feared that the bourgeois would completely wreck the agrarian economy. He proposed an agricultural reform, reform which caters first to the needs of the indigenous population before thinking of export and global trade. He was against primitive agriculture and made moves that the establishment of better means for commercial and sustainable agriculture. He was very concerned about the agrarian situation in Peru as it meant exploitation by the ruling class over the rest. In order to spread his radical ideas of revolution, he joined the university student movements and fought for the removal of teachers who were pro-capitalists. He realized that for the kind of nationalism that he preached, education had to reach the masses. He thus informed the natives to become educated and stated that it is the right of all Peruvians to be allowed to become educated and literate. Apart from this, Marti Gui can be credited for undertaking comparative studies and for his wide experience of examining the political economies and their trajectories of other third world nations. To finally conclude this module, we can see how Jos Maria Tigui brings out different aspects of Marxist phenomena of, for instance, accumulation of wealth, creation of surplus value, the whole idea of how feudalism still survives in various forms within capitalism and how it leads to expropriation of wealth and exploitation of the most marginal groups in society in Peru.